Hey guys, Mr. Tecumseh here. Um, unfortunately, my phone died while I was in the middle of finishing up with wiring in the um, LED and all the wiring. So now, unfortunately, I'm either going to have to make this a two-part video or I'm going to have to try to splice the two, this clip with the other parts that I had um, all, you know, paused and then restarted and then paused because my phone died and it's one of the problems with you know like i said when i once i hit a thousand um subs i'll invest in a better camera and some better um editing software i have done it once i believe where i put two clips together so i kind of know how to do it it's been a while since i've done it so I'm going to try to do it that way to make it a one part video. If I don't, this is part two and the rest was part one. But anyway, let's get to the conclusion of this. So what I did was before I showed where I hooked up ground from this light to the mounting bolt on the motor. Then what I did was I took a wire and, and ran it from the new LED to the which happens to be the off uh, prong on the switch then I took my old light and ran that also together to the off prong then I took and I only had yellow wire which is fine it's a power color so it tells you it's power I took this yellow wire and ran it from the on part prong of the on off switch which I used a step drill bit to put this on off switch on okay so that's nice and ran that yellow wire from the on prong to the 3 amp DC connector of that stator that I showed earlier the AC is currently unused okay and now both lights are running off of this and there's plenty of power to run both of these lights I, sh I mentioned in my previous video back in March exactly how many watts this thing can handle so you can tune into that video i'll put it down in the description so you can go to that video because in that video i mentioned all the part numbers all the different stators uh exactly how many uh watts it can handle and everything because as long as you stay under and i believe it was 76 watts you're fine this light draws um i believe it's 33 watts okay that one's even less so let's just say that total it's maybe um 15 uh 50 50 watts okay which is you know so it, it can handle up to like i believe it's 77 watts or you know which is three three amps so as long as you stay under that wattage you don't have to worry about anything burning out or anything like that so just tune into that other video to get the specifics on that because it's been a while since I went over that but I know I'm covered in that so anyway let me go ahead and start it show it works it's in the off position I'm going to start the motor okay you know I don't even think we really need choke it's it's warm so I got it on half and we'll give it a tug and a little bit of choke It's direct current it's staying as bright as it would it's not dimming way down like alternating current does direct current as long as it's running it's going to stay pretty much relatively bright but anyway you're not going to have that uh, strobing effect because it's on direct current okay and you got plenty of power and you don't need to worry about bridge rectifiers 
or capacitors or any of that stuff because you're going direct to direct current. That's the easiest way to do it. So if you got one of these Tecumseh motors, that's the way to go. Now, let me just pull it up one more time. Now, what I think I might do, I might run that one full time because that one's not that bright. And in the daytime, it'll be okay for that one to be on. This one, it's not necessary for that one to be on during the day. So I'll have that one on off. So this way in the daytime, that one's not on bothering our eyes. But at nighttime, that one will already still be on, but in the daytime, it won't bother us. At nighttime, when we need that light, I'll have it on. So I think that's what I'm going to do. Um, that's the one thing I'm going to do. I'm going to have a full-time one, the dimmer one, and then the bright one will be for, you know, dark. Because a lot of times you're running these snowblowers at night, and those old lights are worthless. They're just for show. They're more for safety than anything. And... This is a major upgrade so you can see at nighttime while you're operating your snowblower. Because we use those headlights that go on our heads that are LEDs, and those are, are great. But this is a big step forward because now we don't have to rely on that. Because now when you're behind the machine, you've got plenty of light now. And that's what you want. Because in the winter, it gets dark at 4 o'clock. You get a snowstorm. And you go to clear out even your own driveway and it's five o'clock it's already dark and for us we do commercial snow removal 75 percent of the time we're in the dark so we need to be able to see so that was the uh, idea here okay upgraded to the led and it is i'll tell you right now the exact power of this one 18 watt and it came with two of them, 1800 lumen. And somewhere it even tells you the wattage. Let's see. I'll have to relook that up, but I think it was somewhere around 33. Um, so 33, and you've got a total of 77 to work with. And that one, I believe, is only 18. That puts you at about 50, 51. So you've got, you still have room left over. And then you still have five amps alternating current to work with, too. So that makes it even better. You still have this much juice on this side that isn't even being tapped into. So, you know, if you got a snowblower where you do have a battery that you need to power or a motor that runs your chute then you would hook your LED into the AC side, which has five amps, so you could use your direct current to power your battery, run your motors, and all that stuff. But since, you know, the majority of snowblowers don't have that stuff, you just get that bigger stator, that more powerful stator, and you run right into direct current, and then you're ready to go. You can get, um, and that is, that's plenty bright, but you can get one of these LEDs that are three times as big, and then the thing will be, you know, super bright. But this is more than enough. And plus, like I said, we do commercial snow removal, so we don't want to be bothering our customers, but we just want to be able to see. So that concludes it. That's how it's done. I'm going to wrap this up. I'm going to zip tie all these wires nice and clean. Like I said, I'm probably just going to run that one direct so it runs full time, where this one will have the connected the on off switch and then tomorrow because it's already getting dark um, I'll finish up with any touch-ups left I had to do I was pretty much done up here I just had to put the thing up on its nose and uh, spray a little clear coat on the bottom in that one area that I did underneath and then this blower is now 100% ready to go fully upgraded and I've already made videos of this thing throwing snow these snappers are awesome just the way they're designed and the gap between the impeller and the belly is already very narrow so the impeller mod isn't even really necessary I mean I could add it but like I said we deal with newspapers running over newspapers and I don't want to have to deal with because a lot of times when I get a newspaper clogged in there I'm getting my map gas torch out and I'm just lighting that newspaper up 
and toasting it out of there because we don't fight with them anymore. So that's the way we do it. But anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think about this because no one covered how to um, hook up the LEDs without using the um, bridge right to fire and capacitors, which makes things more complicated. And then you got all these funky things hanging off your machine. Okay, you do it this way, it's nice and clean, all right? Once I zip tie these wires together, you're not gonna have anything hanging off. You don't have to worry about anything getting wet because I've already got everything nice and shrink wrapped. So she's good to go. And, um, you know, please give me the thumbs up and share the video. If you have any questions on what I, what I did, feel free to ask. Like I said, I made a previous video on the in-depth workings of which flywheel there is, the different part numbers. I'll leave that video in the description, and I'll catch you on the next one. Thanks, guys. Later.